Welcome back to the channel. So there are a lot of misconceptions about what self-care is. And I feel like the way some people think of self-care actually keeps them from doing it altogether or does the opposite, has them like overindulge in things that actually aren't supportive for their self-care and well-being. So I'm gonna talk about that and then also give you a way to implement self-care in a way that actually takes care of you. Okay, so I see two spectrums of self-care that are um, like not always realistic or one's not really always realistic and one's not necessarily supportive for your actual care and well-being. So the not realistic one is the self-care that people are always talking about like, go get a massage, you know, go for a walk on the beach. I got to do that yesterday, it was awesome, but like that's not realistic for everyone to do every day, me either. Um, take a bath, you know, while your kids are playing, just go relax and take a few hours for your evening rituals. It's like, that is all beautiful. And if you can create the space to schedule these things and do them for yourselves, do them because some of those things are really important, right? And day-to-day -day life does not always allow for a two-hour self-care ritual at the end of the day, right? So I think that so many people think that that's self-care and then they just don't do anything because these things are so big and extreme and tough to fit in. So I'm gonna give you a middle ground here in a second. But the other one I see, it's actually detrimental to well-being, are the people that are like, self-care like i'm just gonna have a bottle of wine and like eat the whole pizza because i'm taking care of myself and this is what i need that's that's very very extreme um or people that like make decisions that are very like rooted in self and not necessarily caring for others and then using self-care almost as an excuse to like do behavior that's not not actually in alignment with the true them and what they want for their life and i think there can be these two extremes and then a lot of people just don't take care of themselves in general because there's there's these two extremes at work so let's talk about the middle ground that you can implement to actually care for your needs and that is honestly just caring for your needs and and what i mean is like when I think of self-care, when my self-care is off, it's because I'm not checking in with myself and what I need throughout the day. It's not because I didn't schedule a massage and it's not because I didn't drink a bottle of wine with my friends last night. It is because I'm going through the day on autopilot, not slowing down, disconnected from myself, doing things for my business and other people without taking care of my needs. And I have needs for connection, I have needs for spiritual connection, I have needs for connecting with those I love, I have needs for partnership, I have needs for family, I have needs for play, fun, free time, all these things. And I also have needs for significance, building an amazing business, serving our clients. There's like this wide range of things, right? Many of them are linked with other people and many of them are linked with self. And I don't need to go on a week-long vacation filled with bubble baths and massages to slow down throughout the day and ask myself, hey, how am I feeling and what do I need? And that is one of my biggest hacks for self-care. Yes, morning rituals, important. Yes, evening rituals, important. But the biggest thing that has helped me is really how I approach the the day, how I approach myself. And so if I am feeling burnt out with work, I used to always just push through. Sometimes I still have moments of it, but I'm getting much better. But now I'm like, okay, I can do this in a half an hour. What can I do right now to take care of myself? Maybe that is a quick song with headphones. Maybe that's a little breathing exercise. Maybe that's just walking outside and standing in the sun for a minute before I go back in. There's other times where I feel a heightened emotional state. I might be sad, I might be upset. My default might be to plop in my bed and scroll on social media or do, thing that, do something that kind of lets me escape or numb. That is not self-care. That is numbing and diversion. Self-care would be like, okay, how am I feeling right now? I'm feeling this. Can I be with this? Yes, I can be with this. What do I need right now to support me in this moment? Maybe it actually is a bubble bath. Maybe it's just going about my day. Maybe it's like, you know what? I can't do this right now because I got a lot going on, but tonight I'm gonna make sure I do something to just really honor and support the way I'm feeling. And so that constant question of like, how do I wanna feel? 
how am I feeling? What do I need? How do I want to feel? I circulate through these throughout the day, but really what do I need right now to support me feeling my best is such a great question that works well for me and does wonders for your self care. And if you are super busy and there's a time where you're overwhelmed and you can't necessarily pause, you can at least ask yourself that and take a deep breath and drop from your head and get into your body and at least get yourself centered and calm and out of a stress response. And these mini little activities are going to do way more for self-care than thinking that self-care is this big monumental task that you just can't fit in your day because I promise you, everyone has time to pause once every hour and take a deep breath and check in with their body. Everyone has time when they're stressed out to take a few deep breaths and connect with themselves instead of focusing all their attention outside of themselves on other people. And at the end of the day, when people resist self-care, I typically see it because they're worried that other people aren't going to get taken care of or they're worried that their responsibilities are going to not be taken care of appropriately if they take the time to take care of themselves. And this might might show some truth in like the short term. Obviously, if you take a half an hour out of work to care for yourself, that does take a half an hour away from work. But that half an hour to care for yourself is going to make you perform so much better in that time that you're working and prevent things like burnout, exhaustion, resentment to those you love because you're burning yourself out, not taking care of yourself. So it's actually a duty for yourself, a duty for others, and a duty for all you're up to in the world to check in with yourself, give yourself what you need, and care for yourself. So I hope this helped. If you need any support in the self-care department, our free Facebook group is an amazing place to go to. We're constantly posting tips on food, body, self-care, self-love, all these things. So there will be a link for that in the description just below the video. Come join us over there. It's a tribe of a few thousand women on a mission to really feel their best and live their best life without their struggle with food in their body or their self-care holding them back. So come join us there. And if you like this video, I would love to hear from you in the comments. How do you plan on implementing these tools? How do you plan on honoring yourself and caring for yourself? Let's start a chain of positivity and intentions in the comments below this video. So awesome. Do that now and then make sure you come back next week because I release a video every Tuesday all about things having to do with living your very best life with freedom from your struggle with your body and food. So I will see you next week.